Cynthia. Hi, Good Cynthia. evening. Welcome to um, our policy manual meeting. I call the meeting to order on Tuesday, June 22nd at 5.30 p.m. In attendance, we have um, Alyssa Haggerty from the Brockton Public Schools and Cynthia Rivas Mendez, uh, Ward 2 School Committee, and Judy Sullivan, Ward 5 School Committee. And the agenda tonight, we are going to review um, sections C, D, and L of the School Committee Policy Manual, and then we'll go to other business and then we'll adjourn. So I'm gonna turn the meeting over to Superintendent Thomas at this point. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, as we continue to update our um, policy manual, as we all know, it's uh, very, very thick uh, and very comprehensive. So um, uh, we, this is a thorough review of the entire manual and we're on now to sections D, C, D, and L um, of the school committee policy manual. Um, these have been reviewed by Alyssa Haggerty, um, but also are reviewed in conjunction with the Mass um, Association of School Committees to, to look at their policies and then they're vetted um, by our legal counsel. So Alyssa is going to present sections uh, C, D, and L of the policy manual for, um, you know, for updating and um, some revisions. Okay, so we'll, I think we're ready, Alyssa, if you are to go over the sections like we did last time. Um, and then if we have any questions, we can ask after each section or at the end. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Um, I did put together an agenda, so I'm just gonna share my screen for a minute here. Let's see. Can you see that? So for tonight, we have section C, D, and L um, for packet number two. And just as a refresher, all of these packets contained documents um, that were in three different forms. So the first document was a document of all the policies for review in their current state. The second was a reference guide, which was in table format, which is kind of like your master plan of what's happening with all your policies. And then the third document was a detailed review of each policy, and that's the booklet that's all redlined and shows any changes that are be being made um, and presented here tonight. The first section was section C, which is general school administration. Um, those policies for the most part were last review and updated in August of 2002. They are mostly Mass Association of School Committee derived policies. You'll hear me refer to that as MASK, just to try to make that a little shorter for you. Um, and you might wanna pay special attention to two policies in that section, section CB, which is the school superintendent. That's a policy that's um, a MASK policy that's missing from Brockton Public Schools policies, as well as CHB, which is school committee review of regulations. And I'm recommending to remove or reclassify that policy to a different section. The next section we'll go over is section D, which is finance. Um, these policies were reviewed and updated within the last five years, most of which were updated in December of 2017. And they're a pretty good mix of both Mass Association of School Committee policies and Brockton Public Schools specific policies. Um, I did review these with input from your chief financial officer and we made a few changes, mostly related to legal language and things like that. Um, as you can imagine with finance, there haven't been a ton of changes in the last five years. It's not like this was a section uh, with policies related to like technology or curriculum or something like that where you might see some more changes. So that one should be pretty straightforward as well. So we also threw in section L, which is agency relations. And there's only four policies in that section. So I figured we could just get that one done tonight two Mass Associ Association of School Committees, one hybrid and one Brockton specific policy. And after tonight's meeting, um, half of all the policies will have been presented. So that's great. We're 50% done at the policy review level. Um, 
We are awaiting the review and the return of Section E from legal right now, and then we'll be ready to present Section E. We are preparing Sections G, H, and K for the legal department, and we have Sections I and J in review. The preliminary review of all the sections has been complete, and all of the policies are being updated on the website as they are approved. And lastly, once all the policies are complete, we'll have a master document that will be that will live within the superintendent's office. So kind of just as a refresher, moving forward, if you revisit these annually, it'll be a lot easier. Everything will be in one place. It'll be one cohesive document that can be searched um, where you can kind of move things around as you see fit. And, you know, hopefully that will make this process a little bit more streamlined moving forward. So now I am going to move over. Um, let's see, let's start with section C. Does everyone have section C in front of them? Should I share my screen for this part as well? Or what's the best way to do this? Um, I have it in front of me. Um, Cynthia, do you okay. have it? Or? Okay, so section C. Just, I don't know if Cynthia has it in front of her. Yes, I have it as well. Okay, thing. thank you. Thank Perfect. you. Okay. We'll start with CA, administration goals. This is a Mass Association of School Committee policy. It's updated to reflect the most recent version. Um, there's just a few small changes to language here. Section CB, school superintendent. This is a Mass Association of School Committee policy that's missing from Brockton Public Schools policies. It's possible where these, this section was last reviewed so long ago, back in 2002, that I don't have a date for this policy where, when it originated within the Mass Association of School Committees, but it's possible that it originated after 2002, which is why it's not reflected within your policies. Um, so I did make one small change to it just to make it relevant to Brockton, and I would recommend adding this policy um, if the school committee sees fit. And I'll read this one just because it's not something that you have at this time. It says, the committee shall employ a superintendent of schools and fix their compensation. The superintendent shall act in accordance with mass general laws and shall perform such other duties consistent with this section as the committee may determine. They shall also prepare such reports as may be required by the State Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and shall submit materials for the committee's annual report to the selectmen in sufficient time for printing in the annual report. And we just changed selectmen to the mayor. Um, and that policy has also been reviewed by the law department. The next policy is CBD, the superintendent's contract. This is a Mass Association of School Committee policy. It's been updated to reflect its most recent version. We changed the word election to appointment and it reads, the committee upon the appointment of a candidate to be superintendent will enter into a written contract with the superintendent, which will meet the requirements of law and will protect the rights of both the committee and the superintendent. In addition, with said contract or in the absence of specific contract language by vote of members, the committee may choose to negotiate a successor contract with an incumbent superintendent. So that is a mass policy, but as you can see, um, you know, the second portion of it has been added since your last review. Section CBI, evaluation of the superintendent. Again, this is a mass policy. We've updated it to reflect the most recent version. This one reads, evaluation can serve the purpose of helping educators and educational leaders continually improve their practice. Through evaluation of the superintendent, the school committee will strive to accomplish the following. Ensure the efforts of the superintendent are focused on direct goals and the standards of professional practice established by state regulation are met by the superintendent. Ensure all committee members and the superintendent are in agreement and clear on the role of the superintendent and the immediate priorities among their responsibilities. 
develop a respectful and productive working relationship between the school committee and superintendent. And number four, provide administrative leadership of excellence for the school district. The school committee will periodically develop with the superintendent a set of performance objectives based on the needs of the school district and in keeping with state regulations for evaluation of the superintendent. The superintendent's performance will be reviewed in accordance with these specified goals and standards. Additional objectives will be established according to the evaluation cycle that agreed upon, evaluation cycle agreed upon with the superintendent. All school committee discussion and deliberation related to the superintendent's performance evaluation shall be conducted in open session in accordance with open meeting law. <clears throat> Next, we have CCB line and staff relations. This is a mass policy. We've updated it to reflect the most recent version. Um, here you'll see just the word system was changed twice to the word district in, in school district. CE, Administrative Councils, Cabinets, and Committees. Again, a mass policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Just a few language um, updates here. His and her, you'll see throughout, has been changed to there. Um, and once again, system has changed to district. <clears throat> CH, Policy Implementation. This is a mass policy that was last updated by MASC in July of 2016. So just a recommendation to update that language um, that hasn't been reviewed here since prior to 2016. Mostly we are changing regulations to procedures, again, system to district. <clears throat> CHA, development of procedures. Mass policy, we've made some updates, um, mostly to language that we've already talked about. Anytime we use the word parents, we're also adding guardians um, in your updated policies. We are also taking the gender role out of language, so you'll see again that he and she is changed to they or there. And this is just all based on the recommendations of your law department. <clears throat> CHB, School Committee Review of Regulations. This is a mass policy that was reclassifying under section BGD. So my recommendation is to remove this policy altogether from section C because we've already approved it in section B in the last packet. Section CHC, Procedures Dissemination. Um, you can see the title did change originally. It was written as regulations dissemination. So we've updated that to be reflective of the most current policy within the Mass Association of School Committees. Um, and we've changed some, more or less just some language updates. CHCA, the approval of handbooks and directives. Again, a Mass Association of School Committees policy. This has more or less remained the same. Um, a couple small language updates. CHCA-E, the approval of handbooks and directives. This is a Mass Association of School Committees policy. This is a little bit more detailed than the policy that we mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, in comparison to handbooks and directives. We did make a couple small changes, just there were a couple grammatical things within this policy that needed to be updated, but the content is more or less still the same. CHD, the administration and administration and policy absence. This is a mask policy updated to reflect its most recent version. CI, Originally read administration and policy absence. Um, the title has been updated to read administrative reports. And this is again a Mass Association of School Committees policies. It's been updated to reflect its most recent version. EM, the school district annual report. Another Mass Association of School Committees policy. 
Um, we did make some changes. The policy now reads an annual report covering the diversified activities of the school district and the administration's recommendations for their improvement will be prepared by the superintendent and presented to the school committee. Upon committee approval, the report will be made available to the public and used as one means for informing the parents and guardians, citizens, commissioner of education, and others of the program and conditions of the city's public schools. This is established by law and committee policy. And that is the last um, policy in this section. Any questions on section C? I don't think there's any questions, so we could move on to D. Oh, Cynthia, you have one question? Yeah, I have one question. Last time we um, reviewed the other policies, we discussed the word citizens and possibly changing that to residents. Um, and we, you're right, we did update that in a prior policy. I think that was in section B. And we can do that throughout. That's not a problem. Uh, okay, great. Y'all set, Cynthia? Or do you have another question? Sure. I think we're all set with the questions. Okay. Let me pull up section D. Okay. Section D, finance. Okay, the first policy in this section is DA, which is titled Fiscal Management Goals. This is a Mass Association of School Committees policy updated to reflect its most recent version. No other changes were recommended. Just a couple small language updates there. Section DB, the annual budget. This is what I'm coining a hybrid policy um, where it kind of clearly derived from a Mass Association of School Committees policy, but you definitely have some specific language to Brockton Public Schools in some of these hybrid policies. Um, I'm gonna read this one. This one says, the annual budget is the financial expression of the educational program of the school department and it reflects the goals and objectives of the school committee to meet the needs of all students. This next section is not in your current policy, but is in the updated Mass Association of School Committees policies. The budget then is more than just a financial instrument and requires on the part of the committee, the staff and the community an orderly and cooperative effort to ensure sound fiscal practices for achieving the educational goals and objectives of the school district. And then the following language is retained in both policies. One school committee member may be assigned as a liaison with school administrators during the budget process and scheduling of meetings will take into consideration the work schedule of the school committee member. The local budget and budgeting process shall conform to all existing state and local requirements as set forth by the state constitution, revised ordinances of the city of Brockton, the state board of education and the Brockton school committee. Public school budgeting is regulated and controlled by legislation, state regulations and local school committee requirements. The operating budget for the school district will be prepared and presented in line with state policy and will be developed and refined in accordance with these same requirements. The superintendent will serve as budget officer, but they may delegate portions of this responsibility to members of their staff as they deem appropriate. The three general areas of responsibility for the superintendent as budget officer will be budget preparation, budget presentation, and budget administration. And the legal references follow. Next, we have DBC, which has been retitled. It originally read Budget Planning, Preparation, and Scheduling, and the title has been updated to read budget deadlines and schedules. 
Um, there have been a few changes here to the original mask policy. The budget preparation section was removed and some of the titles in the policy were removed just to make it read a little bit more cohesively. Um, and additionally, there is one section in here that is Brockton Public Schools specific, which is the, the section titled responsibility. Um, and I did make one small change to the second sentence. That section reads, the superintendent of schools shall have overall responsibility for the planning, preparation, and presentation of the budget to the school committee. Originally, the next sentence read, the superintendent shall delegate aspects of the budget planning, preparation, and presentation to the chief budget officer. And we've updated that to read to the chief financial officer and we've added and or supporting staff members. Um, I think as your organizational charts change with time, there might be additional staff members who you might wanna include in, especially the presentation and the preparation, less about the planning, um, but it just kind of gives you a little bit more of an opportunity to have some inclusiveness with that process. And the rest of that policy has, remo has remained the same with the exception of Two small language updates, and then again, you'll see throughout, we changed chief budget officer to chief financial officer, which is the proper title in your district. DBD is titled budget planning. This is a Mass Association of School Committees policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Just a couple small language updates. Next, we have DBG, which is titled Budget Adoption Procedures. Um, this is a mask policy with some Brockton Public Schools specific language. The mask policy in its entirety reads, and this is included in the, in the notes in your document, um, it reads authority for Adoption of the final school budget lies with the citizens who comprise and who are entitled to vote at the town meeting. The school budget is presented as part of the town as part of the total town budget for action at the annual town meeting established by law and charter. Um, as you can see, your DBG budget adoption procedures policy is quite a bit longer. We have a presentation section, documentation section, public hearing, and then approval. All of these have been reviewed by your law department. Um, and the only, I, I guess, note that we kind of went back and forth was with was we considered revising um, a sentence in the presentation section that refers to open sessions. Um, and your law department suggested that since it is a hearing and the public has to be given a chance to speak that it would be best to remove that last sentence of the presentation section um, so we did remove the sentence that reads the public shall sit as observers during these open sessions and there were no local charter references found for this particular um, policy next we have DBJ, Budget Transfer Authority. This is a hybrid policy. Um, there was no local charter reference, unfortunately. We did confirm that, um, I wasn't sure if the personal services account existed. That sounded like it should have been personnel services account to me, but um, we did track it down and you do have a personal services account. So that has remained and all we did was update chief budget officer to chief financial officer. DD, funding proposals and applications. Uh, this is a mask policy. It's updated to reflect its most recent version. Um, very few updates to policy DD. Policy DDA, grants and gifts from private sources. This is a Brockton specific policy. Um, it complies with the legal reference that's noted. There's no changes recommended to this policy. Policy DDB, solicitation, management, and use of private sector resources. 
Um, this is a Brockton specific policy. Your chief financial officer has confirmed that they do still follow this practice. Um, so we had very little updates to this policy. We did add in the first number one under C, you'll see have proper safeguards to guarantee fiscal accountability. We added the, the phrase and avoid any conflict of interest. And then we also added under number 10, um, we took out part of a sentence and we added a new one. So I'll read the, the new number 10 reads, advertising on specific materials or supplies is acceptable, provided that it is in good taste, not excessively prominent, and with due emphasis on the educational material. As a general rule, we've removed flagrant advertisement and inappropriate advertisement that would be offensive to any segment on the school community. And instead we've added, as a general rule, advertisement that violated district policies or is not consistent with district values will not be accepted. <clears throat> the next policy is DECA, which is titled Title I Supplement, not Supplant Requirement. This is a Brockton Public School specific policy and no changes were recommended. Policy DFD gate receipts. Again, this is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy and your chief financial officer has confirmed that this process is still followed. So no changes were recommended. Policy DFF, income from school sales. Another Brockton Public Schools specific policy and no changes were recommended. Policy DFFA, student project payments. Um, this is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy. No changes were recommended. Policy DFG, revenue from tuitions. This is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy. Um, so we, we did check with the law department um, we were questioning whether or not this policy would apply to children who are not legal residents, but are, for example, under the control of the Department of Children and Families in foster care, um, or in a, some sort of a scenario like that. And the law department um, suggested that this section should remain unchanged. And that was because of the school choice language, um, where I know next year Brockton does participate in school choice grades eight through 12. Um, so we did do a little bit of homework there just to make sure that this would comply moving forward. Section DGA authorized signatures. This is a Mass Association of School Committees policy and no changes were made. DH, bonded employees and officers. Another Mass Association of School Committees policy. Just a couple small language updates. Policy DHA contracts and signing authority. This is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy um, and we did recommend some changes. So the new, the new policy will read, contracts for materials, supplies and equipment shall be awarded by the school committee upon the recommendation of the superintendent and the chief financial officer. A subcommittee of designated school committee members shall review the bids with the chief financial officer or designated department representative prior to awarding of bids. The superintendent of school shall have the authority to sign contracts. Policy DI, fiscal counting and reporting. We've updated this policy to reflect the most recent mask policy. Um, and we've also just changed that language once again from chief budget officer to chief financial officer. 
policy DIE audits, another mask policy that was updated to reflect its most recent version, section DJ. This one was titled purchasing authority in the Brockton Public Schools policy, but the mask policy just has it titled as purchasing. So we've updated the title and it was linked on um, Brockton Public Schools website, but the link was broken. So it was unclear whether or not this was a policy that was adopted within your last update. So I've recommended adding it. Um, and this policy reads, the school committee declares its intention to purchase competitively without prejudice and to seek maximum educational value for every dollar expended. The acquisition of materials, equipment, and services will be centralized in the superintendent's office of the school district. The superintendent will serve as purchasing agent. They will develop and administer the purchasing program for the schools in keeping with legal requirements and with the adopted school budget. School purchases will be made only on an official purchase orders approved for, for issuance by the appropriate unit head and signed by the superintendent with such exceptions as may be made by the latter for emergency purchases. And the legal references are noted. Um, policy DJA, which is titled Purchasing Authority. This is somewhat of a hybrid policy. It originated with MASK. It has some Brockton specific language. Recommendation to retain this policy as it reads, um, just with the update of changing chief budget officer to chief financial officer. DJE, which reads procurement requirements. This is a MASK policy that's missing from Brockton's policies. Um, the recommendation is to add this policy. You don't have any other policies related to procurement. Um, and this policy reads, all purchases of materials and equipment and all contracts for construction or maintenance in amounts exceeding $50,000 will be based upon competitive bidding. All purchases valued between $10,000 and $50,000 shall require the procurement officer to attempt to secure three quotes for all materials, equipment, or services. All purchases valued at less than $10,000 shall require the use of sound business practices to secure the best quality at the best price. An effort will be made to procure multiple bids for all purchases in excess of $50,000. When recommending acceptance of a bid, the superintendent will inform the school committee whenever possible of the competitive price of a reasonable substitute for the item specified. When bidding procedures are used, bids will be advertised appropriately. Suppliers will be invited to have their names placed on distribution lists to receive invitations to bid. When specifications are prepared, they will be distributed to all merchants and firms who have indicated an interest in bidding. All bids will be submitted in sealed envelopes addressed to the superintendent and plainly marked with the name of the bid and the time of the bid opening. Bids will be opened in public at the time specified and all bid bidders will be invited to be present. The committee reserves the right to reject any or all bids and to accept the bid that appears to be in the best interest of the school district. The committee reserves the right to waive any informality in or reject any or all bids or any part of any bid. Any bid may be withdrawn prior to the scheduled time for the opening of, of the bids. Any bid received after the time and date specified will not be considered. All bids will remain firm for a period of 30 days after opening. The bidder to whom an award is made may be required to enter into a written contract with the school district. And that was last updated by MASK in February of 2017 and the legal references are noted. This is, um, I believe, a practice that is done now. You just don't have the written policy in place. And I think by including this in your policy manual, any updates that are done to the law or um, to procurement requirements at the Mass Association of School Committee level will be revis revisited annually um, if this is a part of your policies. <clears throat> Next, we have DJFC, canvassing and selling. This is a Brockton specific policy and no changes were recommended. Policy DK, payment procedures. This is kind of a hybrid policy. 
Um, there is some language that's specific to Brockton Public Schools. No changes were recommended to this policy at this time. Policy DKC, expense reimbursements. This was updated to reflect the most recent mask policy and no other changes were recommended. Policy DN, school properties disposition. This is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy. No changes were recommended. Um, I would consider maybe some additional details or supporting documents in your procedures book relative to school properties disposition. Policy DO, Brockton Public Schools fuel efficient vehicle policy. This is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy. Um, I do believe that this policy in its original form would be more appropriately classified in the procedures book. And for purposes of policy, I would recommend the following. In an effort to reduce the Brockton Public Schools fuel consumption and energy costs, the Brockton Public School Committee has adopted a policy to purchase only fuel efficient vehicles for municipal school use whenever vehicles are commercially available and practicable. Brockton Public Schools will maintain an annual vehicle inventory for all vehicles and a plan for replacing any non-exempt vehicles with vehicles that meet, at a minimum, the fuel efficiency ratings contained in the most recent guidance for Criterion 4, published by the Mass Department of Energy Resources Green Communities Division. This policy applies to all divisions and departments of Brockton Public Schools. It is the responsibility of the Brockton Public School Department to check the Green Communities Division's guidance for Criterion 4 for updates prior to ordering replacement vehicles. All non-exempt vehicles shall be replaced with fuel-efficient vehicles that adhere to the most recent Green Communities Criterion 4 guidance. Vehicles shall be replaced when they are no longer operable and will not be recycled from one municipal department to another unless the recycled replacement vehicle meets the fuel efficiency ratings outlined in the policy. In addition, when replacing exempt vehicles, the function of the vehicle will be reviewed for potential replacement with a more fuel efficient vehicle, including a fuel efficient non-exempt vehicle. The school administration will review on an annual basis the vehicle inventory along with the Green Communities Criterion 4 guidance to plan for new acquisitions as part of planning for the new fiscal year budget. The school superintendent or his or her designee shall approve all vehicle purchases to replace any exempt and non-exempt vehicle for public school use. Um, most of all of that language was within your original policy, but as you can see, there was also a lot of other language um, that some of which is outdated, it's no longer relative to Criterion 4 um, or the Green Communities policy. So what we tried to do was take out the most important and policy related language and in hopes that the procedural language can be followed up with in your procedures manual. And the language that probably isn't needed in the policy because it is in either the legal reference or some of those other supporting documents um, really wasn't necessary within your policy book. And I will just say, I am, as I read that out loud, I am going to make one small change to the last section that read um, the school superintendent or his or her designee. We will change his or her designee to their designee. And that was the last policy in Section D, Finance. Does anybody have any questions on Section D? No. Alyssa, we're going to have to um, um, move L to, we'll put that on a future policy. 
manual po uh, policy manual meeting because we're about 10 minutes into our next meeting. No problem. So we'll have, we'll work with um, um, the subcommittee, we'll work on Melinda and you to schedule that follow up within the next few weeks. Perfect. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Alyssa. Great job. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, we're just going to um, ask for other business. Any other business um, to be brought up for policy manual? I don't have anything. Thank you. I don't have anything either. Okay, so we'll look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. So I'll call the roll. Cynthia Rivas Mendez? Yes. And Judy Sullivan? Yes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.